Hello, hello, lesson five, my friends, lesson five in Siao's Grammar for Biblical Hebrew. Um, lesson five begins on page 38 and begins with a continuation of this concept of geminate nouns, which we met in lesson four under this question of different kinds of roots in Hebrew. Um, this is a short, kind of punchy little chapter. Um, again, another important one. Um, for understanding some changes that we're going to see in some words when we add things like plural endings. Um, see, it reminds us at the top of page 38 what a geminate noun is. Remember that word geminus in Latin means twin, and thus geminate nouns are those nouns which have the second and third radicals, that is the second and third letters, um, um, being identical. So, um, um, so he explains this. Um, however, you know, a problem that you get into is sometimes you'll see a geminate noun and the doubled consonant doesn't appear. So the example he gives up top there is um, um, lave, the word lave, heart, um, can also be written lave of. So when you see lave written as heart, you might not know that it actually can, you'd think, oh, a two, a two letter word. No, it's actually the root is lave of, lamed bet bet. Um, you might say, well, who cares? What's the difference? How does that affect anything? Well, the problem is when you go to a plural, see his second paragraph there, um, right in the middle, thus the plural, li both, li both, what's that little dot doing in the bet there, in li both? Do you see that? It's a dagesh, right? And that dagesh here indicates doubling. You might be like, okay, I see that it's plural, feminine plural, li both, hearts, minds, whatever. Why is it, why, why would the bet be doubled there? Is it doubled because it's a, 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 a you know, it, it's it's a stop and not a spirant? No, because it's it's in um, it, it's it's not the right kind of syllable for that. It's not in a it, it it's not live oath. It's lib both. Okay, is the way that we'll pronounce that. So this is a two syllable word with a doubled bet. Why is the bet doubled? The bet is doubled because it's actually doubled. Okay, it's doubled because there are actually two bets there, two b's. Um, why is it doubled? Well, because it's actually a geminate. Those are both the root letters. They're just kind of crunched into one. You might say, well, why don't they just write it lamed, lamed, bet, bet, vav, tav? Well, they don't write it like that, okay? It's not how it goes. Um, so he gives some, some words, I mean, some common words, begin middle of page 38. Uh, the word of am, people, very common word in Hebrew, apparently um, comes from the root um, I and mem, mem, so that when it's plural, oh, look at that, in the mem there, you see the dagash, amim, it's doubled. Um, sak, sak, not as common, but there you see again, sakim in the plural, and look at that dagash. In other words, it's a geminate. What if you have a guttural or a resh as the geminate letter? Oh, tricky, because you can't double the guttural or the resh, you will recall. A word like sar, down below, uh, bottom of page 38, sar, the root is really sin, resh, resh. Um, so you get sarim, princes, you can't double the resh, so what do you have to do? Compensatory lengthening. Um, what would have been a patak now goes to comets underneath the sin. Sarim, do you see that? Um, pach, trap, the plural is pachim. What's going on there? I thought, don't you get compensatory lengthening? Not always. Um, sometimes you can get, like with this chet here, virtual doubling. So it's a virtually doubled. It's fake doubled. Okay. <laughs> and he gives some more examples of this. Chets on the next page, and aim, arrow, mother. Chetzim, arrows, emoth, mothers. Okay. And then there's some others. Chok, statue, and dove, bear. Where you get that O vowel, the plural is going to go to the U sound there. Chukim, duvim, uh, dubim, excuse me. Okay. So look that over. Um, next page, he's going into this issue of segalits. We've talked a little bit about segalits, haven't we? These two syllable words with a stress on the first syllable. Okay. Regal, evid, berak, neder, ozen, orach, malek. It's so another one not on here, common common word, king. Okay, do you see all these words? When you add a suffix, um, which we haven't actually got to suffixes yet, so why is he bringing up suffixes? Well, uh, you know, 
this is one thing about the grammar that sometimes people don't like. He's bringing up complicated concepts that we're not going to get to for several lessons. That's actually a good teaching strategy, though, that CO is using because he's not going to he's not going to count on that you're going to remember this totally. But we're introducing concepts along the way. The thing that happens with segments is that when you add a suffix, for instance, you might say, "Okay, uh, um, regal foot." The first word there in this chart, regal foot. How, what if you wanted to say my foot? Do you have an English in Hebrew, just as in Hebrew, um, or do you have in Hebrew just as in English a word before the word like my, a, a possessive pronoun there? No, actually in Hebrew it gets tacked on the end of the noun. So if you wanted to say my foot in Hebrew, you'd say ragli, my foot. Eved, servant. What if you wanted to say my servant? Avdi. What if ozen, ear? What if you wanted to say my ear? Ozni. Segments tend to fall into these patterns, uh, coddle, cuddle, kittle patterns. Um, don't worry about this. Again, I think I made this point in the last lesson. One thing to know here is that there are some vowel changes sometimes that you don't always expect and they seem unpredictable. They are predictable if you know enough about the history of the development of Semitic languages. <laughs> okay, So nothing just happens for no reason. These are, these are linguistic changes by linguistic rules that, that, that happen and there are reasons for it. Okay, that's really all I want you to know about this segula thing right here. Um, and he goes on and on about this like it's the most important thing in the world right now. It's not. Uh, this is important, page 43, irregular plurals. There are some words that, ta that, that get plural, plural forms that just are not predictable. You kind of just have to memorize them. In fact, if you memorize the list on page 43, you would be in good shape. Um, a good way to memorize a list like this is just to write them all on a note card and just say them repeatedly with each other as a pair. So when you say of, page 43 of the chart there, of, father, just always say of, avoth, father, fathers, ach, achim, brother, brothers, ish, anashim, this is a good one, comes up a lot, man, men, isha, nashim, woman, women, bayat, Batim, house, houses. Bain, banim, son, sons. Bat, banoth, daughter, daughters. Yom, yamim, day, days. Ia, alim, city, cities. Rosh, roshim, head, heads. Okay. So practice that. Practice those. Look over that chart. You know, when you have irregular plurals that can't easily be guessed by just adding im or oath at the end of the word, um, memorize them with their irregular plural form. That really helps, okay? I will now say the vocabulary, and we'll be done with this lesson. It's a nice short one. Page 44. Av. Av. Father. Plural. Avoth. Fathers. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Tent. Ach. Ach. Brother. Plural. Achim. Notice what's irregular about that is that instead of a comets there under the aleph in the plural, you get a patach. Achoth. Achoth. Sister. Achayoth. Achayoth. Sisters. That's not a very common um, irregular plural. Ish. Ish can be man or husband. Ish. Anashim. Anashim is the plural. The expected plural, ishim, is, is, is attested, but not, not often at all. Anashim. Isha. Isha. Plural, nashim. Nashim, woman, wife, women, wives. Oh, see how has an interesting little footnote here that I want you to look at. Look at the word isha there in the list. What's going on in the shin there? You got a dagesh in there, right? What's that dagesh doing? That indicates doubling of the shin. Why would the shin be doubled? Can it just be isha without any doubling? Look at the note. He says, note the doubling of the shin. This suggests actually that the root is not just... Uh, uh, this suggests that the root is... Um, Aleph Nun Shin, Anch, um, and in fact, so that N is actually that N of the plural Nashim. 
that doesn't just come out of nowhere. That's actually part of what's thought to be the, the, a, a more archaic root there. But what has happened? The N assimilated into the shin. So just by repetitive process of saying something like that, that, that sound, that ansh, 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 ansh kind of melds into ash. Ends often get assimilated with a strong consonant that follows them in Hebrew. So instead of insha or something like that, uh, you get isha, two shins in a row. Buy it. Buy it. House. Plural. Batim. Batim. When I was in introductory Hebrew, we always, this was one of the first words we all memorized by using the trick. You want a house? Buy it. Get it? Get it? Okay. Bain. Bain. Bain, son, grandson, banim, banim, bat, bat, daughter, plural, irregular, banoth, banoth, so you get banim and banoth, um, male kids and female kids, har, 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 Mountain, yom, yom, day, irregular plural, yamim, and related to an adverb, yomam, which means daily or every day. Not to be confused with the next word, yam, yam, sea, ocean, plural, yamim. Notice the doubling of the mem there in the plural, um, geminate. Kelly, 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 vessel, instrument, weapon, Kelim, plural, vessels. Maase, Maase, a deed or an act related to the verb asa, meaning to do or make or perform. You see that mem at the beginning turns the verb into a noun, a deed or an act. Asa is to do. Ear, 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 city, irregular plural, arim, arim, am, am, people, amim, plural for people. Notice the doubling of the mem there in the plural with the dagash indicates that this is in fact in its root a geminate, I and mem mem. Rosh, 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 which has the regular plural, Rashim, Rashim, head, top, chief, Rishon means the first, Reshit means beginning, connected to in, in the first word of Genesis, Bereshith, in, in the beginning or when God began, kind of a translation controversy there, uh, but the word for head is related to the word for begin in Hebrew, Rosh. And finally, Sar, 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 Commander, Ruler, Prince.